All right, so this is the uh, the top level div, right? The the content is being injected into that into that div. I mean, we could see it right here, um, right? We can we can inspect this, uh, and notice uh, here that the indeed uh, the the body does contain that div. See that ID equal root, but somehow somebody injected content in there, a div that has a class app, and injected a header, and injected an image, uh, a paragraph. Uh, and hyperlink. Let's see how that happened, right? Uh, so, so, uh, so that's the index HTML. That's the index page that gets loaded, right? And we're going to inject content in there dynamically. Let's look at source. So, source is where we're going to spend most of our time, right? This is where we're going to implement our components. Yes. Uh, and if you notice under here, there is one particular file called index.js, right? And index.js, you know, very much like index.html is like the default page that you see if you don't ask for anything. It's like the entry point of a, of a website. Well, same thing, index.js is like the entry point of our React application, OK? Uh, so index.js, notice has uh, quite a few things here that we're not familiar with. Uh, we have a whole bunch of imports in there, right? Uh, so this import is a new keyword in ES6 right, that um, uh, deal, uh, allows us to uh, uh, Declare a module, self-contained uh, modules, that, and then be able to export whatever we want from those modules, and then be able to import whatever is exported from other modules. Right? It solves the problem that uh, that uh, JavaScript had um, of uh, of having a single namespace. Right? In a, in a single namespace, you can you know if you declare a function or a variable, uh, you were littering the, this this namespace, and you you would you could have collisions, your name collisions. Yes. Uh, but with uh, modules, you don't have that problem. Everything is self-contained inside of a module, and only what you export right, is available for other folks to import. Right? And you have to do it uh, explicitly. Uh, so here we have the import keywords. Right? Um, so uh, we have uh, also notice that we're importing stuff from React. We're importing things from React DOM. Those are all libraries that have been downloaded and are, are all available inside of node underscore modules. Uh, so if you if you import from and you say React, right? Uh, if you don't if you don't say anything, if you don't say where the location is, right? Um, it'll assume that it has to look into your node underscore modules. Instead, if you're importing some file uh, explicitly using the dot notation over here, right? If you say dot, uh, you're you're explicitly saying, hey, there's a file in this same directory that is called index.css. Right, so if you explicitly say where the file is, then the file actually lives right where you say it is, either either uh, relative or absolutely. But if you don't specify where, by default, it'll start looking inside of node modules. So this React somewhere in my node modules, there'll be um, there'll be React somewhere in here. Notice all the libraries that we need, right? So React will be somewhere in here, way way down there, and React DOM as well. Yes. Uh, they all depend on each other, so you, you that, that React depends on a whole bunch of things, and those things depend on other things, and they're all break up, broken up. Uh, and there's there's a there's a dependency tree, yeah. right? That that gets resolved, and then they all get uh, not necessarily loaded immediately, right? But all they're, they're loaded dynamically when they, when you need them. Uh, another thing that I like to point out is that is that all these new features of importing and, and whatnot. Uh, those are not fully supported by all browsers, right? Uh, I mean, Safari and Chrome will, will, will definitely support a lot of these features, right? But they're not universally supported across all browsers, right? So, uh, so you know, it's concerning that say, well, I'm writing in a language, you know, in a JavaScript language that not all browsers are going to understand. That, that's concerning. I mean, that was, wasn't that the point of using jQuery, right? That we can standardize this? Well, that's what React does too. React standardizes it in, in um, using what is called transpilers, right? What it does is that it, 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 you can write in this high-level language, yes? Uh, but then it gets converted into a low-level version of JavaScript that all browsers can understand. Make sense? Right, so for instance, um, uh, these, these, uh, these imports, right, basically define modules, self-contained modules. If you look at the transpiled code, Right, that uh, it generates for you, they will look very much like our iffy expressions, right? Where where you have the functions are are you know inside of a function, right? And then you call that function, 
you know, to, to protect the namespace, if you look at the transpiled version, we're not, we're not going to bother with that anymore, right? Instead, we're going to stick to this high-level language, right, that does that all for us. Right? We don't need to deal with, with that anymore, right? Import, export is going to allow us to uh, uh, deal with, uh, with those uh, namespaces. Uh, the other thing here that we, we're doing here is this React over here, React DOM. So React DOM is the point where uh, the, the actual DOM and React meet. Uh, the DOM is the representation of the browser of what's rendering on the screen. And then React DOM it says, I'm going to tie that low-level HTML content, I'm going to tie it to this high-level React. Okay? And, the tie, and the tying happens as follows. React DOM has a function called render. And render takes two arguments. Right? I'm not going to bother with the first argument. The second argument says, says I want to bind to the following elements in the HTML, right, into the low-level DOM, right? If you notice, it's looking into the document. Document is a low-level JavaScript object that represents the DOM, right? And it says dot get, get element by ID. So find me an element from the doc, from the DOM whose ID is root. Well, that root is exactly where our index page is, isn't it? If you go back to my, our index page, notice that there is, there's root. See that? That's how that's how React knows where it's going to inject all the dynamic content. It knows that into that div, I'm going to inject everything dynamically. Make sense? Pretty good? So what is it going to inject? Well, it's going to inject whatever you give it as the first argument. Whatever you tell it in the first argument to inject, that's what's going to uh, be rendered in, inside that root div. Make sense? Right? The only thing here is that it says app. What is that? I mean, it looks like a it looks like a element, right? An HTML uh, tag, right? Uh, and uh, and but but actually that this this app, you know, if you nav if you look at it, it's uh, it's being imported from some other file. See that? If you go into that file, you'll notice that that file is just a function. It's just a function. So that that's an app. Right, uh, that we are trying to inject in there is just a it's just a function, and that function returns something that looks like HTML. Okay. Looks like HTML, um, and so that that's what's being rendered. So let's 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 uh, let's leave app for a second. Uh, notice that I can I can put in here anything I want to inject into that div, right? If I want to inject maybe h1 and say uh, hello world, okay. I can go back and notice that it will re, it will, it will retranspile, right, and it will reload the page automatically, right, and it will it will inject my 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 dynamic content. Well, it's not dynamic; it's static right now. It says h1, right. Uh, so anything that I type as the first argument into the DOM uh, uh, React DOM, that's what gets injected into that DOM. Yes, everybody good, right? But obviously h1 is too is too uh, is too trivial. All right, so let's get back. Let's uh, let's return it into app. App, right? So so this app tells the uh, the renderer, right? Uh, look for a function call app, right? Which is declared here. The, look for a function declare uh, that that is being exported by some other uh, module, right? Notice at the bottom we are exporting app, right? We're exporting this function, so that, that's how here I can import it and then use it here, right? Yes. It's the most common used, but you can call it whatever you want. Right. It's not standard, but it's very. It's the most common used. Uh, so if you go in there, right, it's a function app. It, you know, it tries to denote that this is the top level, right, uh, container of all the components. Right, this is the base. Uh, so you'll, you'll notice that this function is returning this this uh, HTML over here, right, and this is exactly the content that we saw earlier. Right, here's the image. Where is it? Here's the image. There it is. Right, here's a paragraph. Edit, source, something, something, something. There it is. Edit, source. Right, notice the hyperlink right here. There it is. That's the hyperlink down below. See that? So whatever this function is returning, that's what it's, uh, that's what it's, um, uh, it's being used to render the content. Everybody good? Okay. Uh, so if I replace this, if I replace this and say, you know, I can say um, you know h1 
and says, you know, hello from app. Right? Notice that this transpiles again right? and reloads again, and showing the content as, as H1. Everybody good? Right? Right, awesome. 